All right. So this is part two of a two-part episode where I am laying out some powerhouse truths in response to an Ask a Life Coach question that came in. So if you did not listen to episode 71, you're going to want to make sure that you do that because that was part one. Here in episode 72, we're talking about part two. We're talking about some more of these powerhouse truths and we're talking about how to apply them. So that's what I have for you on this episode of the Intentional Bomb Podcast. Let's jump in. Well, hey there, I am Jennifer Roskamp, a certified life coach and homeschool mom of nine who is passionate about helping women just like you embrace the here and now while also being focused on creating the life you actually want. In reality, it's not about thinking life will get so much better or so much easier when you fill in the blank. Let's work on creating a life you love now. So let's dive in and get started on redefining Supermom to be someone who is present, intentional, and content rather than perfect in our homes, in our lives, and in our own skin. Let's get started. This is the Intentional Mom Podcast. Okay, so given that this is part two, let me really quick quickly tell you again what the first powerhouse truths are that I shared in the last episode. You're going to want to go back to the previous episode, episode 71, so that you can hear these in a more detailed way. Uh, truth number one, the things I do with my body are intentional rather than accidental. Number two, I approach life with an abundance mindset rather than a scarcity mindset. Number three, being willing to try and being willing to fail replaces fear and uncertainty. Number four, intentional relationship building is part of my weekly calendar. And number five, the last one I shared in the previous episode was I create and adhere to healthy boundaries with people, my time, and my thoughts. So I've got two uh, powerhouse truths here left. And then we're going to talk about how to apply these. I don't make them part of your life. I don't share things like truths and mantras just so that they can be mind clutter. I share these things with you with the intent that you are going to be able to recall and use these and insert them into the messy places in your life. When things happen that tend to derail you and escalate your thoughts and escalate your emotions and you find yourself thinking thoughts that you don't want to think and experiencing results that you don't want to experience, these are going to help take you out of the backseat, which is likely how you ended up in a place you didn't want, how you ended up with thoughts that are not serving you, how you ended up with unhealthy thoughts and unhealthy emotions, and you recognize those unhealthy thoughts and emotions and you say, all right, I need the healthier ones. I need to move away from here. I'm not in a good place. I'm not in a good headspace. Truths and mantras help kind of become the vehicle that help you almost like the bridge to get you back to healthier thoughts, healthier emotions, and achieving the results. At least you're on a path to achieving the results that you actually want. So powerhouse truth number six says, I offset every loss or failure with a gain resolution, with a gain resolution. So what is a gain resolution? Well, it's looking at loss or failure, which I have a lot to say about failure as well. I have an entire course on failure because how we look at failure, how we're conditioned from the times we're very, very young to look at failure as something to avoid doesn't serve us well. And we have a very unhealthy definition of failure. And when we classify ourselves as having failed, which we do way more than we should, it then becomes a weapon that we use against ourselves to make ourselves feel worse, to try to motivate ourselves to do something different or to just bow out, to surrender, to wave the white flag and say, you know what, this is just the way it is. And as a life coach, I call that riding along in the backseat. When you wave the white flag about things in your life and say, well, this is just the way it is. I guess I just have to accept it. I guess this is the way it's going to get. This is the way it's going to be. That's where we are sitting in the backseat of our own life, waiting for things to happen, saying, well, let the current take me where it takes me. You might not be able to fight completely against that current and end up exactly where you want, but you can end up in a better place, but it's going to take you climbing out of the backseat and into the front seat. 
And so a gain resolution helps you do that. A gain resolution helps you look at a situation when it didn't go the way that you would like. When you're dealt some difficult obstacles, some challenges, maybe even some gut-wrenching, heartbreaking situations. And it's allowing you to look at it in a different way. One of the things I like to say, and that I do say as a life coach a lot, is there is always two sides to every situation and they are both all bad. There is always an element of something good in every situation. It's not always easy to find, and finding the good doesn't offset the bad. But it allows us to incorporate that there's some of both. There's a mix of both in everything. And that's something that, as, as humans, we're often just not aware of. And we end up in unhealthy places when we feel like all is lost. So a game resolution basically looks at these situations and it says, what can I learn from this? What can I learn from this? A game resolution is just looking at the situation and saying, how can I move forward? How can I grow myself? So what did I learn? How can I grow? Or how did I grow? One of my favorite questions what does this make possible? That actually comes from Dan Miller, who is an amazing coach to many, many, many over the years. He has since passed away, but that's one, that was one of his favorite phrases is, what does this make possible? Because in reality, with, even with every very disappointing circumstance, there's always going to be something that is made possible because of it. But it's it's not always going to be easy to see. And so coming up with a gain resolution when you feel failure or when you feel a sense of loss, it's going to take work, sometimes hard work on your part. But this powerhouse truth says I offset every loss for failure with a gain resolution. I refuse to stay in the negative. I refuse to stay in a place of pain. I refuse to stay in a place of despair, in hopelessness. I am going to figure out how to find hope. I am going to find the way to find some positivity, to recognize some good. I am going to choose to find the good. That is what a gain resolution is. And so offsetting every loss or failure with what did I gain? That's what the sixth truth is all about. The seventh truth is this. I take responsibility for myself, for my results, and therefore my life. That's hard. If that felt like a heavy load, a heavy burden for you to carry, it should. But here's the thing. No one else can take responsibility for you. No one else can take responsibility for your results and for your life. Now, can other people play a role? Of course. In every situation, there's going to be external circumstances or external factors in addition to internal. External are those things that we can't do anything about or can do very little about. Internal are the things that we can manipulate. And I use the word manipulate not in a bad way. I take responsibility for myself. I take ownership for myself, for my results, and therefore my life. Because if you want to head in a different trajectory, if you want to be a person who experiences more contentment and more joy and more happiness, you're going to need to take responsibility for what you're currently feeling. No one else can do that for you. And I love what Mel Robbins says when she says, no one's coming for you. Nobody is going to do this for you. That's what she means. This is your life. You've got to take responsibility for it. And you've got to take responsibility for your results. The results that you're getting are an indirect correlation and in alignment with the actions that you are or are not taking. 
And the actions that you are or are not taking are a result of feelings that you're experiencing. And those feelings come as a result of your thoughts. So I just gave you what I teach as the action path sketch. I just gave that to you backwards. Let me give it to you forwards. And we talk about this in the Write a New Chapter Challenge. It's a challenge that I teach live every quarter. So you'll be hearing about this challenge at times. You'll be invited to come join at times. Make sure you do that. That Write a New Chapter Challenge is transforming lives like nothing else I have ever taught. It is 100%. It, it, it contains the tools that you need to 100% climb out of the back seat and into the driver's seat of your life. It really can be your line in the sand moment where you write a new and different chapter from what you've ever experienced. Does that mean that life is going to be smooth sailing and that knowing these things is going to somehow make your life magically better? No. But you are going to have tools with how to manage yourself. And before your life can get quote unquote better, you have to learn how to manage yourself as we all do. But this last mantra says, I take responsibility for myself, for my results, and therefore my life. Because I recognize that I am how I got here. Were there the external factors and circumstances? Of course. But like I said a little bit ago, there's always internal factors as well. You're allowing the thoughts that are driving the ship. And if your ship or your car is ending up where you don't want it to be, you have to examine how you got there. And that's what this mantra in this powerhouse truth is all about. I take responsibility for myself, for my results, and therefore my life. So I shared these seven truths for you. And really, they were an answer to the question, I'm just so worn out. What do I do? In reality, we could talk about all kinds of practical skills. And I do talk about all kinds of practical skills at times. When you're worn out, out we could talk about sleep. We could talk about making sure that you're not neglecting your self-care. And those things all play a role as well. But what wears us out the most is feeling like we are constantly swimming upstream in life. We are constantly fighting against everyone and everything. We are constantly struggling to keep our head above water to some varying degree. And when you're feeling like, I am, I am gasping for breath, I am worn out, we need to look at yourself first. And that's why rather than talking about self-care and sleep and all those things, which do matter, the best thing that I can share with you is how to control yourself. And it starts by believing and embracing these truths. If where you're at isn't where you want to be, what have you got to lose? You can look at these truths and you can say, yeah, well, that won't work for me. And it's not going to paint rainbows and sunshine. I'm not here to paint rainbows and sunshine over your hard situation and over the challenges. Those are still there. But again, it's all about how you perceive what's possible, how you perceive your circumstances, and how you perceive what your response is going to be. Those things make all the difference. So what do you do with these truths? Now that I've shared them with you, well, if you haven't written them down, make sure that you do that. And when you find yourself feeling, I'm worn out with the day, I'm worn out, as a general whole, when someone asks you the question, and if you're being honest, your answer to the question of how are you doing? How are you doing really? If your answer to that question is, I'm so tired, I'm exhausted, I'm worn out, I'm stretched too thin, I'm in survival mode. You need to start with these truths so that you can get yourself in a better headspace. Because when you are in a healthier headspace and when your relationships are healthier and when you're not allowing other people to infiltrate your boundaries in an unhealthy way, when you're able to move forward from failure, it makes all the difference in how you experience your life every day. And you get to decide what your experience is every day with your life. And these truths do that. So make sure you've written them down. When you find yourself in a worn out space, go back to these truths. Different ones will resonate at different times and you focus on them. And whichever one or 
two maybe are resonating with you at any given time, you keep reminding yourself. You keep practicing that thought. That's what the life coach in me says. I'm here to help people practice the healthy thoughts so that they can get to the healthy places that they want to get to. So you have these truths. You practice these truths. You practice remembering them. Because when you practice these truths, you are climbing out of that backseat and into that driver's seat, ready to actually take the actions that are going to lead you towards the results you want, as opposed to feeling like you're waving the white flag, and as opposed to feeling like this is the best it gets. It's not. It starts by managing yourself so that you can manage your life. You have these truths. Go back to them. Practice them. Live them. That's what you do with them. So that's what I had in this two-part two part series on the Intense Mom Hot Test that all stem from the question of, I'm just so worn out. These are seven powerhouse truths that will change everything. Thanks so much for joining. I cannot wait to hear how these make a difference in your life. If you want to have your question answered by a life coach, reach out to me. You can email me anytime, Jennifer Roskett at theintentionalmom.com. You can leave a comment wherever you're listening to this podcast. You can even reach out to me on Instagram. I am the Intentional Mom blog on Instagram. Let me know you've got a question for the Ask a Life Coach episode. We'll throw your hat in the ring with, for your question to be answered. Make it a great day until we talk again. All right. Well, there you have it. Another question answered for our Ask a Life Coach episode. This time was broken into a two-part series so that it wouldn't be one super long episode. So make sure you listen to both episode 71 and 72. They go together. Make sure that you take notes. Make sure that you know where these truths are and make sure that you are applying and practicing them in your daily life. If you want your daily life to change, it's up to you. I'm here to give you the tools and training to help you do that. I'm so excited that you are here. In our next episode of the Intentional Mom Podcast, we've got a shiny new mantra because it's Sunday Monday. We'll talk then. Make a great day.